Good morning. Well, welcome here to another Sunday morning with Paul and Angie Wagler from AriseNow.ca. Yes, well, we are delighted to be with you here once again on a Sunday morning, and we're going to start a, a new theme, a new series this morning. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so that first John went on for, I believe it was 10 weeks, yeah. but, um, and, but we made it through it all five chapters. Thorough journey through first John. Yeah. And well, I think you could have been even been more, more. <laughs> more thorough, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, we trust that was a blessing and we'd love to hear your feedback on that series. If uh, you watch some or all of it and uh, just to let us know the things that stood out or the things that you learned, the things that God is speaking to your heart. Right. And But today, in connection with what is happening in the world right now, which is the Olympics, and I don't know if you're into that, but I am I really like watching the Olympics for the, the sport, uh, the, the competition, 16 days or so that it's on. I love the, the different events. There's some that I'm not particularly fond to watch, but there's many that I do like to watch. And I really like, especially the when there's races of various kinds. There's swimming races, there's there's cycling races, there's running races, and maybe there's some other kinds, but those are the ones that come to mind. And, oh, there's even walking races. That's really interesting. <laughs> but uh, so in the, in the running races in particular, uh, one of my favorite in the, is, is the 100 meter sprint, the 100 meter dash. And, uh, and we're gonna have the men's final, I think is gonna be this afternoon. And so we're really looking forward to, to checking that out. And so, but at the beginning of the race, the starter uh, calls the, the people to attention by saying, on your mark, or get ready, <laughs> and then he says, set, and then, well, we would say go, but he just, there's like a, a little bang, a little gun goes off, and, and then the race is on, right? And so we're gonna, for this next series, these next few weeks, we're gonna talk about ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Yeah, and today. <laughs> ready, set, go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and so it's because I think there's there's a lot that we can learn in our life and especially in our journey with Jesus in our as followers of Jesus. There's a lot we can learn uh, from the analogy of a race. And there's numerous places in Scripture uh, where we are told that we are in a race. That's right. And uh, and so we're going to look at some of those uh, over these next three weeks. And we're going to learn a little bit more about ready, set, go, uh, which is ready is prepare, uh, set is position, and go is another P word. Do you know what it is? Pursue. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> you were, I knew that, but yeah. it was just a real glitch there. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. And so, so prepare, position, and pursue. And. Uh, Position, pursue. Yeah, and um, and so we're going to look at a passage today from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, where Paul is talking about this idea that uh, uh, about a race and the things that some things that we can learn from that. So do you want to read those uh, few verses there mm -hmm. from 1 Corinthians 9? Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified disqualified for the prize. And I mean, so we can run as a man or as a woman, right? Yeah. Run as the one who um, is gonna get that prize. Yeah, and and he identifies, you know, one of the challenging things about these races is only one gets the prize. Well, I guess in the Olympics, there's sort of three prizes. There's a gold, silver, and a bronze. Everyone wants the gold, yeah, let's, yeah. let's be honest. Because that's winning the race. I mean, the silver <laughs> medalist or bronze medalist don't say, I won the race. There's only oh, one. I, I think that you're pleased enough to be on the podium, right? right? But 
I mean, in all honesty, everybody wants to get that gold. Yeah, everybody wants to win. Be on the top. And, and he, Paul, is saying here that we should run in a, in a way in our lives. We should live our lives in such a way as we are getting the prize. And so these people who end up at the Olympics uh, or competing in any uh, sport at a world-class level, uh, they didn't just get there by, like, by chance and they're like they're they're on the start line for the hundred meters and they're just like how did this happen you know i didn't i didn't plan to be here <laughs> like i mean and, and and there is sort of probably some elements of kind of shock that well i've actually made it here but yet there there's a whole journey every there's behind every athlete there's a story and that's one of the things i like is when you hear some of the background of uh, of what has brought them to this moment. So we love to follow mountain biking because we had a mountain bike team for quite a number of years, and um, and our kids did. Some of our kids did mountain biking, and and so in and the, I did too. Paul <laughs> but, did too. Did but so just, well. <laughs> yeah, not not quite as well but, as the kids. But, but the interesting thing is, like in the in the women's mountain biking race last week, the 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 gal from France who won. Um, when she was a junior, our daughter raced with her at mm -hmm. one of the World Cups yeah. um, that, that our daughter did. And, um, and the one who won the Olympics, the last Olympics, uh, was the same age as our daughter. And she raced with her, too. And so, you know, it's sort of interesting to see where these girls have gone. They were excellent back um, how many years ago that would have been. Um, but they kept at it. Yeah. They kept at it and they kept going and they're still going and to be at the top of the sport right all these years later because they've dedicated their lives to that it's taken some very uh, great a great deal of sacrifice and a lot of intentionality in terms of preparation right. and so there's things that we can learn about that and paul uh you know identifies in this verse that we don't we don't just uh run aimlessly uh like like you know when you're an, an olympic athlete you don't just go out for a run aimlessly. Every run has its purpose. Like every bit of training has its purpose to build you towards that goal. He says, we don't fight like a man beating the air. You know, like there's boxing in the Olympics right there. And and the people who got there uh, and are good at boxing, <laughs> they, they didn't just do this aimlessly. They didn't just like start swatting they know they had specific regiments of training and and coaching and and things that were going to help them achieve the goal right and and so what can we learn about that as followers of Jesus about how we can be more faithful and how we can uh, run in such a way like Paul says as to get the prize yes and well, I want to encourage us today, uh, you know, and there's various ways that we could think about that. Uh, but I want us to, uh, to encourage us today to think about um, something called spiritual disciplines. Uh, and there's there's a whole lot of spiritual disciplines, uh, and we're not going to be able to have time to cover all of them today. Uh, but if we are going to uh, be like one of these athletes that makes it to the Olympics and, and is competing at the highest level, and we want to be uh, well, uh, do well in our preparation as followers of Jesus, we're going to need to have some discipline. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so when I think of spiritual disciplines, there's two that stand out above all the others. I mean, there's, there's, um, uh, you know, there's worship and there's, uh, there's stewardship and, and uh, there's various other ones, but the two that stand out in my mind are prayer, uh, having a daily, a regular prayer life where we're communicating with God and He's communicating with us. And the second one is Bible reading. That's study of the yeah, word. Yeah, study of the word. Those two, I think, are the foundations for all the others, right? And then there, you know, there's fasting, and and there's a, a one list I saw had journaling on it, and there's numerous spiritual disciplines and, that are that are all good and helpful. Right. I think of like in the early church, um, how the apostles they they had the people in appoint um, deacons mm. um, so that the apostles could what devote themselves to prayer and the word the study of the word right right so that's a good thing for all of us and so i want to bring in another passage here from first peter chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 where peter says therefore prepare your minds for action 
set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. And so I, but I love how it says there at the beginning of that, it says prepare your minds for action. And so when, if we're going to, if we're going to spend some time in the spiritual disciplines, uh, it is going to um, help in us preparing our minds for action. Uh, there's another verse, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 says, As a person thinks in their heart, so are they. And so how you and I think is so important. You know, these athletes, they don't just have physical coaches, but a lot of them, I, I, I believe, have mental coaches, like coaches that help them with their thinking. And uh, because if you, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't have the right mindset uh, to be able to think properly in your training and also while you're competing, uh, you're not going to be successful. And it's the same for us as followers of Jesus. Our thinking is so critical. You know, we do this, we've done this whole series in the past called intentional thinking, which I like to sum it up by saying it's thinking with a purpose, for a purpose and on, on purpose, purpose, right? So being very purposeful okay. in in all that we do and, and in all that we think about uh, because it's going to determine the kind of person we become. As a person thinks in their heart, so are they. Preparing our minds for action. Well, how do we do that? Well, it's through prayer, regularly communicating with God. And, you know, we have our, our special times where we set aside to pray and talk to God. But I like to think of prayer as more than that. It's just, it's this constant communication that we have with God all day long. And uh, so he can be dropping thoughts into our mind uh, all the time because we're in communication with him, mm -hmm. right? And so we want to grow in that. We want to we want to nurture that relationship. Uh, you know, if if uh, if you want to have a good relationship with someone, you need to talk to them regularly, right? And and uh, and not be like uh, every, once every five years or once every year or whatever. Like it's just no. You want to talk to them regularly. Well. We can talk to God at any time, right? It's not like we have to, he's not, he's not busy with someone else. He's able to communicate with all of us at the same time, which is sort of a bit beyond our comprehension. But he, God is always available for us, right? So it's not like sometimes when I might call you because I need to talk to you or want to talk to you and maybe you're on the phone. And then it's like, I can't talk to Angie right then. Or I sometimes for the for these type of things, I have my phone on do not disturb, and sometimes I forget to turn it back <laughs> yes, on. Yes, so yes. it's like you can't get a hold of me. Right, right. <laughs> the only way we can get a hold of her is if she's actually looking at her phone because it's not ringing or vibrating. Yeah. But, uh, but it's never that way with God. We can talk to Him anytime, and and then His Word. It's the I've heard it said is it's the most reliable data that we have about who God is. And so we need to fill our minds and our hearts and our whole beings with God's Word. And, and if you've watched any of our programs, you know that I'm big on memorizing Scripture and, uh, and hiding God's Word in our heart. Angie, there's, there's those two verses in Psalm 119, um, verse 11 and verse 105. Do you remember mm -hmm. what they are? Thy, I'm saying in the King James, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee or against God. Yeah. Right? So we've hidden that word in our heart, so we're not going to sin. That's verse 11 and in the Psalm 119. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So God's word lights us. It illuminates our way. Right. It's, it's, it's amazing because it says in there, it's the, the word of God is in our heart and it keeps us from sinning. Yeah. So if you're struggling with some sin that you just really wish you wouldn't have to struggle with, one of the best ways to get rid of that is hiding God's word in your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, in Hebrews 4.12, it tells us that the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of our heart. And so when we have God's word in us, it actually serves as a, as a way of determining which thoughts and attitudes that we should hold on to. Mm -hmm. Because we're like, oh no, the Word of God says this, I gotta, I gotta not think that thought. So, and I wanna give a little key when we're reading the Word and when we're talking about prayer and the Word. So when you open this up to read, pray and say, Holy Spirit, would you illuminate this for me? Would you make this alive for me? Mm -hmm. Would you reveal truth to me? 
right? Because we can read this too and we can get our own thoughts in the way sometimes, our own religious understandings. That's what happened to the Pharisees when Jesus said about them, you study this word because you think by, by that that you have eternal life, but you've missed the very thing. they missing Jesus and the word. Right. Right? Yeah. So they didn't come to him to have life. And so we can, we can take this on in a way that's unhealthy, even the enemy can quote scripture, even the enemy knows scripture, right? So ask the Holy Spirit to bring truth, to reveal truth to us, to mm -hmm. our very uh, inner being as we read. But the key is to read it regularly. And, and you know, the key in memorizing anything is repetition. Mm -hmm. And so, so what I have done, uh, and I'm gonna share more about this next week, is I have a morning scripture routine. Uh, and that's going to be more about the positioning uh, and the, the getting set. Uh, but okay. but the, the benefit of that is that when you go over some of the same scriptures regularly soon, uh, even for those of you who think, I can't remember anything, I want to challenge that and say, that's not true. Yes, you can. <laughs> and if you repeat something often enough, you will remember it. And, uh, and you will get it into you so that you can do what it says in, uh, in Joshua 1.8. It says, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And it's like, wow, that's a really good word. Yeah. Uh, but how are you going to meditate on it day and night? Uh, well, it's because we got it into our hearts mm -hmm. and we've memorized it. We've put it in there. So it is there for us anytime. And people, that is the best way that I know to prepare ourselves for the race that we are in. And so we live in that relationship with God. We communicate with him all day long. Uh, we have those special times that we set aside where we just take away all the distractions around us and uh, and we just uh, communicate with him and listen to him and then we read his word, we hide it in our hearts. You know, Angie, I was reading this book uh, a while ago uh, about spiritual formation where they talk a lot about the spiritual disciplines. And, uh, and so one of the ones that uh, part of praying that I found a challenge uh, was they were encouraging us uh, to sit with the Lord and not have an agenda and not um, but just to just sit and listen and not talk and uh, <laughs> and you would find that challenging yeah uh, because you know i have my morning prayer list that i go through yes. the different people i pray for and there always and, seems to be a lot and, of need and uh and i have the various scripture uh lists of uh, that are part of my morning prayer routine and I, and I feel really good about that, but then the challenge was to sit and just for several minutes, uh, just to sit and just be with God. And, uh, and so, you know, and, and as you, I've learned some of that from you because um, we're very different as uh, when we started off in our relationship, I was, I didn't like silence and Angie was an introvert. And, uh, well, and I still am. Well, but you talk a lot more than what you used to. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but but back then, it's like I didn't like silence, so I just talked, and you listened. And uh, and so now I've learned to talk less. You've learned to talk more. But there's times where we just uh, are together, and it's just quiet, and we don't always have to be talking, right? Yeah. And uh, and that's okay. And mm -hmm. it's just kind of being together. Yeah. And we can have that sort of same relationship with God that we can just be in his presence and just rest there. Isn't that, that's a lovely picture. Mm -hmm. And I think because, you know, for athletes, one thing we learned when, uh, when our kids and uh, some family members were competing at mountain bike, mountain bike racing at a high level, we learned that rest and recovery is just as important as the, as the actual training that you do. Because if your body doesn't get enough rest and fully recover from a hard effort, uh, you're not going to be able to compete. You can't just train hard all the time. Right. There needs to be a rhythm to that. And so it's the same in our lives. There's a rhythm to, uh, to what we do. And rest and recovery uh, physically and spiritually is a big part of that. Yeah. And so you're, you're, um, you're talking about just taking that time to listen. Mm -hmm. And and I like the story of Mary and Martha uh, that we find in Luke. Um, is it eleven or fifteen? 
<laughs> I'll have to look that up, put it in there. Um, but Jesus comes to visit and Martha is busy preparing the meal. And Mary is taking that time just to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to what Jesus is saying. And Martha gets so upset because Mary isn't helping her. She cuts storms in and she says to Jesus, Jesus, aren't you, um, like, doesn't that bother you? Like, tell my sister to come and help me. Luke 10, 38. Oh, 10. Luke 10, 38. And, and Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. Mary has chosen what is better, and what she's chosen will not be taken from her. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting with the Lord one day, and, I, and, and he said to me, he said, Angie, well, the few times, one time he said, Angie, you're worried and upset about many things. <laughs> you know, one thing, one thing is better than the rest is to come and sit at his feet because he wants to talk. Do we have ears to hear mm -hmm. what he wants to say? And one time he did say to me, he said, you're going to be both Mary and Martha, but how will you know what to do, Martha, mm -hmm. unless you first become Mary and sit at my feet? And that is the biggest thing as a follower of Jesus, as a disciple of him. We need to sit at his feet and hear his voice. That's right. And one of the ways to do that, read the word, but also sit quietly yep. and allow that voice of the spirit to speak to us, to lead and direct. It's not going to be contrary to the word. Right. It always lines up it there. It always lines up, but the word isn't necessarily going to tell us specific things about, oh, go over here and talk to so-and-so or having that person come to your mind and it's like, you need to give her a call now mm -hmm. because right now she needs some encouragement. Yeah. And you know, you don't know that unless you're walking by the Spirit. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent, Angie. And this is all part of our getting ready and our preparation yeah. so that we can run, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, run in such a way as to get the prize. And, and he says at the end that he strikes his body, he beats it to make it a slave. So after I have preached to others, I will not be disqualified for the prize. And I trust that's our desire today as well, that we want to run the race well, and we do not want to miss out on anything that God has for us. And, and how do we do that? Well, it's by living in this relationship with him and reading and studying his word. That is the best preparation that we can do. Very good. Well, we're going to carry on with this again next week and learn some more from the athletes who are uh, racing at the Olympics uh, in our Ready, Set, Go series. And until we meet again, stay awake and stay alert. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, give us a thumbs up, follow and subscribe. Arise Now and Paul and Angie Wagler are part of the E3 Canada family. Consider partnering with us through prayer and financial support to touch more people with the powerful message of God's love, hope, and transforming power. You can find us at arisenow.ca.